Better. This is Pioneer 25. Last year we had 1197 out here. This is some pretty good ground right through here. Good morning guys and welcome back to Warner Farm. So this morning Dad is down at Bass Lake at a Pioneer meeting. Barry and I are going to go over and finish knocking out Grandma's this morning. There's about 10 or 11 acres left in that field so we'll get that knocked out pretty quick here. I guess it's supposed to start raining sometime around 1, 2 o'clock, so hopefully it doesn't decide to start raining before then and we can get this easily knocked out before it starts raining, hopefully. So while I wait for the combine to warm up here, you can see on the crop divider snouts there that uh, there's some cracking visible. I don't know if that really shows up on the camera or not, but that one and that one, you can see that there's some cracking there. Uh, I think those are the only two so far. So Dad and I have been talking about this and we should have done it before harvest, just we didn't take the time to do it. We're gonna order the May West crop divider wear kits. Uh, as far as I know, the rear ones, I don't know if we're going to put the front ones on or not, uh, but we're going to order the rear ones. So hopefully sometime later today we'll get those ordered and get those coming, and sometime this week, I would assume, probably around Friday, I would think, if we can get them ordered today, uh, those should be in, and uh, we can get those put on. <laughs> Corn's not doing bad. Both Dad and I thought this corn would do a little bit better. This is Pioneer E25. Last year we had 1197 out here. This is some pretty good ground right through here. And uh, this can put out 230 to 250 dry land that we've seen. It's anywhere from like 185 up to 220 as you see here. We're not disappointed in it. We just kind of wish it was just a hair bit better. That's pretty good, especially with 825 not having any drought tolerance whatsoever. So we're pretty happy with that. Anywhere from 175 to 230, I would imagine it's gonna average right around 195 to 200, which isn't bad for this field. Running about 20% on moisture, so when I go back to start the dryer, uh, I'll have to set that down about 5 to 10 percent from what it was yesterday and uh, that should put it about right where we want it. We, we cool in the bin so we dump at about 16, 8, 17 percent. So we will be hauling this out here within the next week because we got to have our bins empty again to uh, dry more corn. I would hate to bring another truck down here just for 16 rows. I'm thinking I can get 16 rows on there. I don't know, we're gonna try. Otherwise, they're gonna have to bring the truck down here and uh, then we'll get the head cart down here and drop the head. Last four rows with another semi on the way.
So I just got off the phone with the guy from Greenmark, and he's going to be out here pretty soon to program that 8530. And that should solve the issue on that tractor for the most part, so that's good. Corn head's ready to go. Head cart is coming up the road here, so we will drop the head. And uh, we're going to weed the corn head and the combine set down here, and I'll bring the black semi back. And uh, Dad should be back, but I'll probably end up starting the dryer because it sounds like he's got a magnetic starter he's got to look at on the north bin. Uh, there's a magnetic starter on the bin fan that I guess is acting up, so he's going to look at that, so I'll probably end up starting the dryer then. Uh, not sure if uh, we're going to move over to do custom work today or not. Like I said, it's supposed to rain this afternoon. I guess it just all depends on when and uh, where. Just a hair, yep. Awesome. No more codes. Tractor is good to go. I'm dropping the grain cart in here right now. And before I unhook this, I'm going to put these Outback Wrap hydraulic hose wraps on these hydraulic hoses for the grain cart. That way it's easy to figure out which hose goes where. So these are color matched and they also have 1A and 1B on here. So say 1A would be left hose and 1B would be right hose and 1 would be indicated for SCB outlet 1 so then you got 2A and 2B, 3A and 3B. These make it a heck of a lot easier to hook up hydraulic hoses. So now the hoses are clearly labeled now which hose goes in which outlet. Now it's going to be a heck of a lot faster and a lot easier hooking this thing up. I will have them linked down below in the description along with a promo code that you guys can use when ordering uh, hydraulic wraps for yourself. Once I finish running fuel in this tractor, I'm going to hook up to the vertical till and I'm going to vertical till that field in front of the house. And uh, eventually, here within the next few days, we're going to get that seeded to rye, and that will be our cover crop seed for next year. Then. So they reprogrammed the controller. So they reprogrammed the controller in the armrest after I replaced it. And the problem was uh, there wasn't an issue as far as programming the tractor goes for recognizing the controller. Uh, back when we bought this tractor on auction, there was a single lever control arm for the loader because this tractor actually was ordered with a loader by the original owner and uh, when we bought it on auction they separated the loader from the tractor and we just bought the tractor but they wouldn't take the joystick out. So I went and I yanked the joystick out when we got it back to the farm and found 
found out that the tractor needed to be programmed so it did not recognize the joystick. Well, when they request the payload software by serial number from John Deere, and it's serial number specific, so when this tractor was originally ordered, it was originally ordered with the joystick. So that payload software also had the joystick software on it. And then the tech had to figure out how to remove the joystick software back off the controller so that the tractor would quit saying that there was a joystick in here and uh, that way everything would communicate correctly then. Yep. All right. Yeah, we got a forklift there that we can use to unload them. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of room there at the farm. We get trucks in and out of there all the time delivering seed. Yep. Well, skid steer attachments are coming from MDS tomorrow morning. Alright, we should be good to go. And I don't even have to go far for this field. Literally right in front of me, so... Guidance is set. Everything looks like it's good to rock and roll. Get this thing unfolded and get this thing set depth-wise. And we are ready to rock and roll here on some vertical tillage. All right, should be good to go. Got the depth set. It's running good. Running on a five degree angle. The gangs are at four. Running good. So we are going to plant cereal rye seed out here. So this seed then will be saved for cover crop seed for ourselves and to anybody in a neighborhood that is looking for cover crop seed. We've got cereal rye seed then for sale. This is not hybrid, so we're able to keep this and resell this. Now we do send seed down to Purdue to get germ tested before we do sell any. That way we know the guaranteed germ on it. This year we're gonna have 60 acres of cereal rye seed. So this will be the only field that we will have in cereal rye next year, and it's 60 acres, so it's probably the most amount that we've actually kept, but roughly yield what we're estimating out on this field. We should be able to get 65 with no problem out here uh, if we manage it correctly just like we do wheat. So next year we will not have any wheat. That field across the road uh, we had figured for wheat with 30 acres of rye out there also but since we have a cover crop program contract with the uh, NRCS uh, we have to put that back in the cover crop one more year so we cannot put wheat out there so next year that field will be corn so 143 acres across the road will be corn and we decided to put this field on the other side of 1500 on the right now we debated on keeping a little bit of wheat and uh, maybe doing like 20 acres of wheat, 40 acres of rye, but we decided just do all 60 acres and do 60 acres of rye cover crop seed. Well, it looks like the rain found me. If it stays light like it is right now, we'll just keep right on rolling. Unless it just starts pouring here, then we'll quit. Well, I'm just doing the last pass out here and the sun just decided to come out and it finally quit raining off and on here for the past hour and a half, so. That's good. This will make for a nice seed bed to plant cereal rye into, so it'll work out really good. We're gonna go ahead and call it quits for today. Uh, this thing is due for an oil change, so tomorrow, uh, more than likely, we're gonna switch over to custom work on corn. And uh, before I put this back on the grain cart, I'll go ahead and pull it into shop tomorrow morning and change oil in it and get that hooked up to the grain cart and potentially more likely tomorrow hit it hard on custom harvesting corn. Anyways, thank you guys for watching as always. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.